Hi, I'm Chelsea. Today I'm going to work on a project over at my house. My husband Brandon brought in this bookcase and for a while we used every bit of the storage space, but since then we found a place for everything else and now it's a little underutilized. So instead of filling it back up, we're going to replace it with something a little more decorative and something I've always wanted is a bench for the end of the bed and we're going to upcycle it together. To start this project, you'll need some thick foam, plywood I had cut at the store, you'll also need a circular saw, a speed square, some safety glasses, a marker and a pencil, a tape measure, then a drill driver, a few screws and some household glue, then you'll need coarse and fine sandpaper, milk paint and a paintbrush, felt pads, a bread knife, a stapler, some cute fabric, and of course our table that we're going to convert to a bench. What do you think about our bench? All right, so what exactly are we going to be doing? It's a little tall for a bench, so we're going to cut the legs off, and then we'll take some plywood and foam and fabric and make a cushion for the top, and then attach it to it, mm -hmm. and then it'll be for the end of our bed for us to put our shoes on. All right, nice. All right, so the first thing we have to do is cut off the legs. The height of your bench is totally up to you. Ours is going to be 20 inches before adding the cushion, so we're measuring and marking each leg at 20 inches from the top. Next, let's shorten the legs. It's important that all feet are flat, so use a tool that will guide your saw straight. We're using a speed square. It's not as easy as it looks, but I'll let you try it. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, it's pretty easy. And what we're left with is this. We won't be needing it for this project, but maybe another one. Our next step is sanding down the bench. Clean up the edges of what we just cut, okay. and then knock the sheen off of the entire surface so that the paint will stick to it. Before you begin sanding though, remove any hardware from the furniture. When removing varnish, use sandpaper with a medium sanding grade, around 100 to 120 grit. Brandon and I are using 120. This will provide the paint with a good surface to adhere to. And you don't have to do it too hard, we're just getting the sheen off. That's the only way I know to go. All out. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe it's time you take a break. Oh, okay. <laughs> just kidding, keep working. Oh. Yeah, there's a tough spot here. It must be the one you cut. No, I remember I cut the other side. <laughs> that was on the bottom. Nope. That was on the... It's been all flipped around. I think that was your side. No. <laughs> Uh, I, I forgot, huh? The first rule of marriage, I'm always wrong. <laughs> Once the furniture has been properly sanded down, remove all dust from the surface. So hopefully you like this color. You do like hot pink, right? <laughs> it's navy blue. Nice. We picked this paint up at Woodcraft, which is the perfect place for DIYers. They sell everything from handy jigs to plans for your next project. Ladies first. We're using a milk paint. It's an environmentally safe, low odor paint, which I can appreciate, but it also has really nice saturated colors and a translucent finish, which is ideal for wood furniture. It's called milk paint because milk is actually the binder of the paint in the same way that polymers bind latex paint or oil binds oil paint. Do you like the color? Yeah, of course. I know you like Notre Dame. What are their official colors? Blue and gold. Okay, yeah, there we go. This is like a Notre Dame bench. I like it. Could we paint a little leprechaun on it? No, definitely not. Gosh. Save yourself a step and paint everything but the top. It'll be covered with fabric later. You missed a spot. You missed a leg. <laughs> Ooh, I think I might have touched it. We see there's any, is there blue paint in my hair? I don't see any, I can put some okay. there. No! Oh, ah, stop it, get away. So do I get to put stuff in this drawer? Should we share it? I, th I thought this was taking the place of my shelves. <laughs> so it's my stuff. Okay, you can put your two t-shirts in this drawer. Or you can keep like your little, your pocket tchotchkes in here. That's what I was trying, that's like what I'm your, trying to say. your car keys. That's my plan. Oh, okay then. <laughs> No, literally, like it's my drawer. Uh, I've, I've already have plans for it. Dibs. So we're not gonna put like a divider in it? Dibs. Remember, light. Light. 
Once the paint has had enough time to dry, lightly sand over the surface with 400 grit sandpaper to knock down any raised areas. Then wipe it off again with a clean rag and you're ready for your second and final coat. Oh, Brandon, don't hurt yourself standing around. There's your shirt back. <laughs> Let's set this aside to dry and then we can work on the cushion. All right. All right, I had the plywood cut to size at the store. It's the same dimensions as the top of our bench. We're using the plywood as a guide to mark and then cut our three inch foam. This polyurethane foam is easy to cut with a serrated blade. I'm using a bread knife, but don't worry, this one stays out in my shop. I kind of want a piece of cake. Key lime pie. <laughs> We're also using that same piece underneath the foam so that we don't cut into our work table. We're using household glue to temporarily hold the foam to the plywood. This is only temporary because we'll be wrapping them both with fabric shortly. If you don't have any glue, you can get away without this step, but I like having a little extra hold on the foam while you're pulling the fabric tight. All right, here's the fabric. What do you think? Oh, nice. Ooh, good contrast with the blue. Lay the fabric face down and flat on the table and then center the foam on top with the plywood facing up. Stretch the fabric on top of the plywood and staple it in place. I like to start with one of the longer sides, then do the other long side before doing the two short sides, always keeping the fabric pulled tight and the pattern squared off with the plywood. Wrapping the corners can be a little tricky. There are several ways of doing this. I decided to wrap it in a style similar to wrapping a gift. Cut off any excess fabric outside of the staples so that when you set it on the bench, it'll lie flat. Once the fabric is finished, set the bench upside down on the plywood. Now's a good time to add felt pads to the freshly cut feet. If the feet on your bench are an eighth inch off or so, don't worry too much. They make thick felt pads that will cover the difference and keep your bench from wobbling. Now it's time to attach the cushion to the bench. Square everything up and then screw it together from underneath. We're using one and a half inch screws, but this is really dependent on how thick the top of your bench and your plywood are. Just be sure not to use screws that are too long and will poke through both surfaces and into the foam. I love when a project comes together. Then you can do your favorite thing, cross it off the list. Yeah. Oh man, I just forgot to write it on the list. <laughs> After installing the necessary hardware, we're all done. Time to set this piece in the bedroom. I have so many ideas for upcoming projects. Follow along on Facebook so you don't miss out.